This is Ian Kilborn at St. Lawrence College, Energy Systems Engineering Technology. We are going to take a closer look at building envelope uh, now in red screen. So I'll just click on uh, building envelope and uh, head on in here and we'll have a look around. This is where uh, most of the work happens in modeling a building. Inside building envelope we're going to tell the building, or tell red screen rather, all about the different features of our building, the sizes of the doors and windows, and everything that the building needs in order to uh, operate properly. So here's our uh, building envelope window, and uh, notice we have five different buttons up here. These are uh, five different uh, sections of geometry for the building. So for instance we could do uh, the back half of the building on uh, button 1, the front half on button 2, uh, we could do the top on button 1, the bottom on button 2, uh, whatever we like we can divide our different parts of our building, our doors and windows, our roofs, our floors, every different part of the building that loses heat that is a cold wall or a cold floor is something that we need to model and we can divide them up um, over these buttons um, as we see fit. There are um, a number of things to think about when you're choosing what to put on which button and uh, for each button we have a little window here to write a description of what we put there. So for instance if I was going to do um, on this button I could do uh, the main walls, I could do doors, roof, floor, I can do all kinds of things on one button there's certain things I can't do on one button though. I have only above grade walls. I have one section here to do above grade walls. Uh, if all of them are going to have uh, the same R value, at least all the ones facing north will have the same R value. If I have more than one kind of above grade wall facing north that might have two different R values, I would be smart to put those on different buttons one on button one and one section on button two. Uh, that relieves me from the difficulty of having to come up with a, an average R value for two different uh, pieces of wall if I can divide them up uh, over the buttons. I'm going to click base case equals proposed case for most of my work here. So this is the area of the wall. Uh, this is the direction that it faces and this is the R value of the wall. Up here we have building north. Building north is the number of degrees that the wall that we're calling the north wall, the, north, the wall that we call the north wall probably won't face exactly north. So if it faces 10 degrees to the east of north or 10 degrees to the west of north or whatever it is, that's where we enter it here. Um, and from then on we're going to call it a north wall and red screen will do the adjustments. So for instance if my north wall actually faced 10 degrees west of north I would use a negative sign uh, west is negative and east is positive and I would put 10 in there now my building north is 10 degrees west of uh, real north so from now on my north wall I'm just going to call it a north wall but really it's 10 degrees west. Now so that's um, our uh, our main walls here, our main ab our above grade walls go here. Our windows go here and uh, show you more details of this as we get in. Every time we check one of these boxes it opens up some more uh, places to enter information here and every time I'm just going to check that base case equals proposed case. So this section here is then where we're going to enter our windows. I enter windows in uh, either square feet or square meters. So we'll choose, uh, let's choose square feet. The R value then we get to choose from one of four things here. Uh, the first one is a metric R value, the second one is an imperial R value, the last two are U values. U is the inverse of R. You can see that changes to U when I select one of those. I'm going to work with imperial R values today and so that's what we'll leave set there. We'll talk later about how to actually get the numbers that go in here but obviously it will be the area of your windows uh, paying attention to which ones face in which direction and then the uh, R value associated with each one of those windows. Uh, coming down here then we can model some doors. 
click on that and open up the section for doors. And so doors, uh, again, we'll do in uh, either square meters or square feet. And we will select uh, the imperial R value for the door. Now here we will have the, we need to put in the total area of the door that faces in each of the directions. And so we may have uh, four or five doors, uh, maybe two or three facing north. We need to add all those numbers together uh, before we enter them in here. The roof, this uh, is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, what we really mean here is not the roof, but the ceiling. Uh, the ceiling of the building is the area where we're going to uh, be our thermal boundary of our building. That's where we lose heat. The roof is typically uh, above that somewhere, and we don't concern ourselves with the roof. If we have a cathedral ceiling, where the uh, the ceiling is sloping on the inside of the building and it follows the same slope as the roof, uh, then the roof and the ceiling might be all the same thing from a thermal boundary point of view. But normally the ceiling, uh, that is a flat ceiling, will be the thermal boundary of our building. And we would enter the area of that here and the R value of that here. Notice that we don't care what direction the ceiling faces. Uh, because it doesn't experience any sunlight. The direction matters on all of these other things because the sun can so shine on them and RET screen will take uh, the effect of that um, into consideration when it figures out our heat loss. Let's drag this window up a bit. Um, okay, now um, floors are uh, frequently misunderstood. The floor is, this means in RET screen, a floor means a cold floor. Um, it's not the floor of the basement. It's not uh, the slab on grade if the building sits on a slab on grade. Um, it's a floor that uh, underneath it has cold winter weather. So uh, that would be perhaps a, a floor over an unheated crawl space or a floor of a building that used to be a cottage that's up on stilts could be the area underneath a bay window that extends out over the foundation so that uh, it has uh, no heated space underneath it. It could be a, a bedroom floor uh, above an unheated garage. So if it's above unheated space, then we will model it as a floor. If it's not above unheated space, uh, we don't have a floor, oddly enough. And so we'll just take that out uh, with a normal, ordinary house with, say, a basement. Uh, and nothing else special going on. Uh, we don't have any cold floors. Uh, we will likely have wall below grade and floor below grade. So the wall below grade is the foundation of the house, uh, at least the part of it that is below grade. Again, we have the area and the R value to enter here. Um, and again, the direction that it faces doesn't matter. We've only got one box to put our stuff in. That's because the sun doesn't shine on things that are below grade, so it doesn't matter what direction it faces. Um, similarly, the floor below grade, we click that and open that up, and uh, the number of boxes, as you can see, get bigger and bigger as we go. So the floor below grade, this is uh, going to lose some heat, but uh, not a whole heck of a lot compared to certainly a, a cold floor above grade. Notice on floor below grade, the number that we enter is not the area of the floor as it is in all these other boxes. It is the perimeter of the floor. And of course you can choose feet or meter. The reason that we work with the perimeter for a below grade floor is the perimeter is what matters for heat loss. The floor doesn't lose any heat in, its, in the center of it. Uh, the floor loses heat all around the edges. The edges of the floor are what are exposed to the cold ground. So uh, the amount of heat that the floor lo loses has a lot more to do with how much perimeter it has rather than how much area it has. So a long skinny ranch style bungalow, uh, the floor in the basement would lose more heat than in a nice uh, cubic square building, which would have uh, less perimeter for the same amount of area on the inside. Here we can tell uh, the system uh, what sort of a uh, insulation business we have going on on our floor. It doesn't give us very many choices, uh, just insulated or uninsulated. Um, if we choose insulated, uh, then we can choose the R value of the insulation. 
Um, and here's where we would go on grade or below grade. So if we build a slab on grade building, we would choose a floor on grade, uh, even though it says below grade up here um, as a category. In fact, we can choose an on grade floor down here. And we'd have no walls below grade in that case. Uh, we would just have the floor um, at grade level and it could be insulated or not with an R value associated with it. So that's the basics of uh, what you're going to find inside the building envelope. The other thing I want to mention right now in terms of laying out your, uh, your buttons, best to do the windows uh, near the end. The, uh, the windows are going to be cut out of this wall here. So whatever you model as a wall on the button you're at, in our case number one, the windows that we model on button number one, Red Screen is going to assume that those windows exist in this wall here. So if this is an above grade wood frame wall, for instance, then we want to put all the windows associated with that type of wall here because it's going to reduce the area of the wall as it adds in the windows. If they are basement windows, then here we would like to see the foundation wall above grade. We're assuming in this case that our windows are above grade. And so Red Screen would then cut the windows out of the foundation above grade. So whatever wall you model here should match the windows that you model down here. I'm going to stop here now and we'll do a different video on the details.